Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to quickly summarize the difference between central sleep apnea and obstructive sleep apnea. So let's get started. We're going to start off with central sleep apnea. In central sleep apnea, the central respiratory centers in our brain don't send the appropriate signals to our muscles that control breathing. So because these signals are no longer being sent, we're not breathing properly during our sleep. Some common symptoms of CSA include morning headaches, mood changes, poor concentration, and poor memory as well as fatigue. Now we're going to compare this to obstructive sleep apnea, and in OSA, physical obstruction leads to a cessation of airflow. And so what happens is the muscles in your throat will relax, and this leads to an obstruction that causes airflow to not be able to pass through. And it shares these same symptoms with CSA, so the same thing with the morning headaches, mood changes, poor concentration, poor memory, and fatigue. Now you might be asking how someone is possibly screened for uh, obstructive sleep apnea and it's through a screening tool called stop bang which i'll show right here and so you could see for each letter in stop bang uh, there is a corresponding thing to ask about so snoring tiredness any observed apnea uh, what the patient's blood pressure is their bmi their age their neck circumference and their gender. And so if you suspect OSA in someone, we would go through the screening tool with them to determine if they're at a low, uh, intermediate, or high risk, and then you'd be able to make your recommendations from there. So to diagnose someone with either condition, what we want to do is get a sleep study. The goals of the sleep study are as follows. We want to note the number of arousals. We want to note the number of episodes where oxygen saturation decreased. We want to determine if it's OSA versus CSA. And then we want to look for any seizures or movement disorders. In regards to management and treatment, we want to make sure for both conditions we stop smoking, we want to maintain appropriate weight, and then we want to establish proper sleep hygiene. And with that in mind, for OSA, we want to give CPAP, so this is continuous positive airway pressure. In children who have OSA, we can actually pursue surgery by correcting their tonsillar or adenoidal hypertrophy. This should help with their symptoms. For CSA, we want to use BiPAP, so this is bilevel positive airway pressure. So make sure you remember the difference in treatment for each condition. And that was it for CSA versus OSA. Hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them below. Thanks.